Today's message is brought to you by the partners and friends of Anthony Trice Ministries. We want to continue to talk from the subject that we have to be the courage to succeed. We've been, we've been saying that if you're going to move forward in God, if you're going to fulfill God's plan, purpose, and destiny for your life, it's going to require some courage because you're going to have some obstacles. Amen. You're going to have some demons to overcome. You're going you're gonna to face some lions, some tigers, and some bears. <laughs> so you gotta need some, you're going to need some courage. And, and, and courage is not normal, natural. It's supernatural. Courage is, is, is another form of faith. And, and we said that courage is, is confidence, is boldness, is faith, is tenacity. So I said it like this. The confidence to succeed. The boldness to succeed. The faith to succeed. The tenacity to succeed. If you're going to fulfill God's purpose plan for your life, you will need some courage. Somebody say Courage. Yeah. You cannot be afraid to take some risks. And, and some of us, we really be honest with what I said, we are afraid of everything. So that's why some people stay on a job 30 years and never apply for a new one. I'm mailing already. That's why some people stay in their old regular house. You've been there 30 years. Why don't you go and get a new one? You're afraid. Y'all quiet. That's why some of us drive the same regular car. Because you're afraid. That's why, oh God. That's why some of y'all get the same hairdo. Because <laughs> you're afraid of a new look. <laughs> you're stuck. You are stuck because you are afraid to take some risks. You're afraid to do something different. You're stuck. Okay, read. Now it happened after this. Now we're going to see in these first uh, four scriptures how Judah was invaded by the enemy. And we know Judah means praise. And, and, and you really know, how do you know when you really got something? When you can praise God when your back is against the wall. When you can give God some praise when you're broke. When you can give God some praise when things go contrary to what God said. See, anybody can praise God when they come out. But can you praise God while you're going through? See, that's a whole different level right there. And, and, and that's a sign of maturity. And that's a sign that you love God if he don't do nothing. Because anybody can praise God when, when he's doing something you want him to do. See, that's why you got sinners, the man upstairs. What do you mean a man upstairs? That let me know you don't know him. And you only acknowledging him because something good is happening. But can you give God some praise, glory, and honor when all hell break out? Oh, God, when your house burned down, when your child commits suicide, when that person that you've been with for 50 years decided to leave you. Uh, see, I don't want to hear that type of preaching. Just tickle my fancy. We're going to tickle your fancy, all right? You need to get some boldness. You need to get a real relationship with God because you don't know what's coming next week. And see, so many people are serving God for what they can get. They don't want God. They just want what he can give. And I think Jesus said it like this. He said, y'all following me for the what? Fishes and the loaves. You only follow me for what you get. You don't want me. You just want what I can give. And that mentality is in the church. That's why you cannot have a relationship with God and it's one-sided. God waking you up. He protecting you. He providing for you. He doing this, that, and the other. And you ain't doing nothing for him. It's because you ain't got no relationship with him. I know y'all don't want to hear this. That's why giving is important. Giving your, your money, your time, and your talent is important. So if you're not giving God your time, your money, and your gift, you ain't got no relationship with God. You have a religion. And you come to church out of duty. So the Bible says that they was invaded. 
So God allowed the devil to come against them. And God's going to allow the devil to come against you. How many know nobody's exempt from suffering? None, none of us exempt from going through. That's why when this pandemic broke out, it showed the real you. It just revealed who you really was and where you really stood with God. That's why, that's why the church cleared out. That's why it was a great falling away. Because some of us was on the fence. Some of y'all that's watching, you, was on the, you still on the fence. <laughs> All right, read. That's I, I, I'm a challenge, folk. You ain't going to be around me and be normal and be average. I'm going to challenge you to come up to another level. To become all that God desires for you to be. I'm going to bring out the best. I'm a drill sergeant. I'm a coach. Y'all talk back to me. Read. That the Moabites and the Ammonites, together with some of the Mennonites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. They came to fight against Jehoshaphat. Uh huh. Then it was reported to Jehoshaphat. A great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea. A great multitude, a vast army is coming against you. And, and a lot of times the devil intimidate us with bad news. He torment you in your mind. This going to happen. That's going to happen. Half the stuff the devil tells you in your mind never happened. So you spend two hours tormenting yourself over a lie. Ah. I said over a lie. It, the Bible says that Satan is the what? Father of lies. So anytime the devil talks to you, it's always a lie. Amen. Read. Out of Aram, Syria, uh -huh. and behold. And behold. They are in Hazazon, Tamar, that is in Gadai. The Jehoshaphat was afraid and set himself determinedly. How many know we're human? All of us get afraid. I don't care how deep you appear to be and how anointed you are. And how great thou art. We all experience fear. Amen. Because we are human. The Bible says God has not given us a what? Spirit. For the love, power. So anytime you are experiencing fear, it's never God. Amen. It's always the devil. And he's trying to hinder you. He's trying to prevent you from moving to where God trying to take you. Because I mean no fear paralyzes you. Now, ain't nobody, he just heard they was coming against him. He didn't see it for himself. And have you noticed people always got bad news? They ain't never got nothing good to say. There's always something negative. Read. As his vital need to seek the Lord. To, now, notice what he did. Look how he responded. He immediately sought God. He got before God. He sought, he sought the face of God. He started praying. He pro perhaps probably got into the word. He got into worship. And this is the correct response when, it, when we are engaged in spiritual warfare. But what people do, when they start going through, they stop coming to church. They stop seeking God. They stop praying. They stop doing all the things that we have to do as a Christian to maintain our relationship with God. Where so-and-so at? I know where they at. Going through. I've been hearing it over the years. Bishop, I can't come to church. I said, why? Because I'm going through. You're going through, so you don't come to church? What sense does that make? But that's what people do. Everybody going through. Who, who going through something here? Keep going. Go through it. Don't stop. Say, neighbor, you will never get to it if you don't go through it. The Bible says that Jesus went through Samaria. And his disciples were trying to tell him, Jesus, they trying to kill you, man. Don't you go through that. He says, needful that I go through it. Some things you got to go through. That was suffering that the enemy brought up on them because they made a stance for God. And when you stand for God, you're going to go through. That's why so many people compromise. Read. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Look, now he's the leader, right? You got to keep it together if you're going to leave, folks. You can't, everybody can't fall apart. <laughs> so the Bible, the Bible says he saw God and he did what? Proclaimed a fast. He told everybody to go on a fast. Read. So the people of Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. Now notice, they, they did what the leader said. 
Read. Indeed, they came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord, longing for him with all their hearts. See, they saw for God with all their hearts. Have you, have you noticed that when you're going through, you really seek out the God? Yeah. But when God lifts the burden, you start getting blessed, you start praying. God knows how to keep you on your knees. All you do is let something hit you. Let something knock the wind out of you. Then you really get intense in your prayer life. But when everything going good, got money in the bank, got driving a new car, living in this big old house, got your hair done. <laughs> I don't know why I'm dealing with her tonight. Uh, then you ain't praying. You drive right past the church say, you know what, I used to go over there. <laughs> Y'all laugh, this is what people do. The greatest test you will face as a Christian is the test of success. What am I mean? Let God give you a million dollars. Woo! It'll kill you. <laughs> I'm telling you, the greatest test you're going to face as a believer is when God starts blessing you. And you'll really see where you at. Read. The fat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. So the next thing he did, he stood in the assembly of Judah. He got in the midst of them. Read. In the house of the Lord. Notice he in the house of God. He ain't at his house. He going through. He facing uh, destruction. So where is he at? He's in the house of God. Amen. Read. In front of the new courtyard. Read. And said, O Lord God of our fathers. Now he's praying. Read. Are you not God in heaven? Read. And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? So he's praying by asking God some questions. Read. Power and might are in your hand. He the buttering God up. <laughs> He's stroking God ego. And that's how you pray to God. Yeah, stroke his ego. Lord, ain't nobody like you. <laughs> Jesus, you bad. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how you get, and God say, he, God will get up off his throne and say, who's that? <laughs> you got to know how to stroke God ego. Ego. You got to butter God up. In prayer, but you got to be sincere. So that's what he's doing. Read. There is no one able to take a stand against you. Look at that. Read. Oh, our God. Uh-huh. Did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel? And that's what you got to do. You got to tell God what he did for you. My God. Lord, if you did it, then you're going to do it now. My God. He praying. He's talking to God. Read. And give it forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham. Read. They have lived in it. Uh -huh. And have built you a sanctuary in it for your name. For your name. Uh -huh. Saying, if evil comes on us, or the sword of judgment, or plague, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you. Watch this. He said, if a famine comes, I thought about the coronavirus. He said, we'll stand in this house. See, that was a trick of the enemy to get us out the house of God. And he worked too. And watch this. Some churches got completely wiped out. They none existing anymore. I wonder why. Read. For your name and your presence is in this house. It's your name and your presence. I wouldn't belong to a church where there's no presence of God there. Because if that's the case, it's just a building. But I need God's presence. I need God's nearness. I need God. I need to feel God. People say, well, you, we can't feel God. No, I need to feel him. Okay, I thank God for Apostle Trice, and I thank him for Lady Trice. I thank God because God is a miracle working God. He worked miracle signs and wonders. I'm going to tell you what he did for me. He sent me a check through the mail for my insurance company, my health insurance company, and it wasn't no pocket change. I tell y'all, he, he did it. He sent it to me, and I tell you, just to sow it to your ministry, just do what God tell you to do, because he make ways out of no way. When I say it was a miracle, it was a miracle check. It's miracle money. We in the season for miracle money. We in the season for signs and wonders and miracles. We in the season for God's glory to be displayed. We in the season for God to do what he said he going to do, but we got to be obedient. 
We can't be scared to give. If you're gonna be scared, be, be scared. Do it scared like Bishop say. Step over to his glory. Step over to his promise because we in the promised land. We is in the promised land. We is in the glory. God, we in the open heaven. So we thank God for what he doing. I'm telling y'all he doing it because the money I got is miracle money. When he say he make a way out of no way, he make ways out of no way. Facebook, you better get on top of this. You better step into God's glory. You better press in to his glory because God is real. God is real. I need to know he there. Every now and then. Read. And we will cry out to you, God, in our distress. Read. And you will hear and save us. Read. Now behold, now behold, the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from the land of Egypt, for they turned away from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming down to drive us out of your possession. So, we Lord, we could have got them, but you didn't allow us to mess with them, but now they're coming against us. God don't always tell you why he's doing what he's doing. God ain't going to explain everything to you. That's why faith is so important because we have to obey God by faith. He's not going to give you every detail of everything that he tells you to do. He just give you a sentence. Do it. <laughs> do what, Lord? <laughs> God don't go through all that. He give you a couple of words or a couple of sentences, or he'll give you an unction, or he'll give you an impression, or he'll give you a prophetic word, or he'll give you a dream, or if you're in the word, the word will jump out at you. But God ain't finna give you all these details. about Because if he gave you all the details, you wouldn't trust him. Read. Which you have given us as an inheritance. Read. So how many know God ain't no Indian giver? So God gave them this land, and now they've been threatened that the land's going to be taken from them. How many know this is just a test? You're going to have plenty of tests, believe me. I, I said on Sunday how, what, what's that guy's name? Usain Bolt. He practiced four years for a nine-second test. Race, I'm sorry. So what is that saying to us? You think you're going to always be on the mountain top. Oh, no. You're going to have mountain experiences, but God ain't going to leave you on a mountain. We have to always be training. We Say, neighbor, we're in training for raining. God got to keep us trained. He got to keep us trusting him. He got to keep us close to him. And a lot of times when God lifts a burden, and, and, and we ain't going to always be suffering, but you're going to go through your share of suffering. And why is this so important for all the newcomers in the kingdom? All the millennials that try to tell us how to do it. You still got milk on your breath. I'm just saying, you still wet behind the ear. You ain't been through nothing yet. You, and you highly gifted and highly intelligent and highly anointed, but you can't take nothing. Let somebody lie on you. You cuss them out. You'll be, you'll be in a fist fight. <laughs> so so some, say, neighbor. You need to slow your roll. Folk in the hairy, folk trying to, literally, you better sit down somewhere. Because God would allow something to hit you and knock everything out of you. That's how, that's how he do it. Because he got to keep you looking to him. Now watch this. They being threatened, right? Read. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us. He praying, ain't he? Mm -hmm. He intense. Because you know what? He's going through something. A lot of times, we not really intense with God unless something happens. Read. And we do not know what to do. No, and there's nothing wrong with acknowledging, Lord, I don't know what to do. Amen. I don't have a clue how to handle this situation. Read. But God, our eyes are on you. Watch this. In other words, nobody's saying, I'm going to stay focused. Even though... This ain't for God. Even though this don't make sense, even though I don't feel like going through this, I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to keep my eyes on you. And want to say number one tools that he used against us is distraction. And what do we call that? Attention. 
deficit disorder. Did, did I get it right? All right, watch this. Anytime you have something in the natural, it's the same way in the spirit. And sometimes it's hard for folks to stay, stay focused spiritually. You're easy distracted. Y'all quiet. I felt it over here. All right, read. <laughs> I felt something over here when I said that. You easy distracted. All right, read. So all Judah stood before the Lord. All Judah stood before the Lord. So they was on one accord, right? Uh-huh. Read. With their infants, their wives, and their children. The whole family. Yes. Where are your kids? They're at home in your house. Teenagers at home in your house. What they doing? Having sex? Smoking weed in your basement? Like you're here praising the Lord? Y'all quiet. Quiet. Why they ain't at church? Because you're scared of them. Ah, oh, y'all quiet, quiet, quiet. All right, good class, good class. Read. Then see, it- see, how you bowl here? But you're scared at home. You walking on eggshells at home because you don't want to you don't want to shake nobody up at home. But you bold here. You telling everybody here what to do. You directing traffic here. Why don't you go home and direct traffic? How you trying to lead folk, but you can't lead your kids? How do you deal with your kid? Give an ultimatum. We go to church up in here. Mama ain't going to church. Well, you gotta find your own place. That's how you deal with that. But a lot of y'all scared of y'all kids. Read. Then in the midst of the assembly. Then in the midst of the church or the congregation. Uh huh. The spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. Watch this. The spirit of God or, or a prophetic word came in the midst. Because they were seeking the face of God. They was praying. They was on one accord. Anytime we on one accord, it's always a move of God. That's what happened in the book of Acts. They was up in the upper room. On one accord, and the Bible says, a sound from heaven as a what? Rushing mighty wind came in because they was on one accord. That's why unity is so important. We all doing the same thing at the same time. You always got all balls. Read. On the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael. Read. The son of Metaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. So the spirit of God came up on them. Read. He said, listen carefully, all you people of Judah. Read. And all you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh Uh-huh. And King Jehoshaphat. Read. The Lord says this to you. He got a word for the church. Now they finna get an answer to their prayer. How you want some answers, but you won't pray? How many know prayer is is a two-way street? You talk to God, he'll talk to you. God ain't talking to me because you ain't talking to him. And all prayer is what? It's conversation. But the correct way to pray or the right way to pray is to pray in line with the Bible. Lord, your word says this. Your word says that. That's the correct way to pray. That's how you get your answer. This, that's how you get your prayers answered. When you pray in line with the word. God ain't impressed with thou holy one. Of, God ain't studying all that. A lot of times you going through, you ain't got time to do all that. Lord, help. Jesus, I need some help. You're trying to pronounce all these big words that you don't even know. <laughs> you ever seen anybody pray like that? God ain't studying it. God is, is moved by the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man. That word effectual means earnest. You're praying from your whole heart. That's what moved God. you sincere talking, praying to God, talk, communicating with God. Okay, read. Be not afraid or dismayed. Look, the prophet said, don't be afraid, don't be intimidated, and don't be confused. Read. At this multitude. At this multitude. Yeah, I, know, I know the odds are against you. Read. For the battle is not yours. Watch this. You got to get this. The battle is not yours. Listen, the battle is not between you and the devil. It's between God and Satan. And God is still whooping the devil butt. But see, what happens, God don't just allow us not to go through stuff. God going to take you through a process, and then at the end of the process, he's going to whoop the devil and give you the victory. But right now, it seems like the devil winning. But you know what God is actually doing? Somebody say what? 
giving you an experience. The first thing that happens when you join an army, you go through basic training. What's the purpose of basic training? It's to prepare you for a war. And how many know the higher you go up, the more you bless, the more God use you, the more warfare you go on and encounter? You think it's easy being blessed? No, because folk don't like that. And the devil showed, what, uh, this came to me today. This going to bless somebody. The devil don't want you to be happy. The devil wants you to be miserable. And people do too. People hate to see you happy and smiling. Say, neighbor, misery, love company. When folks miserable, they want some company. I'm broke. I want you to be broke too. The devil is alive. <laughs> That's how the church folk read. But God. But God. Mm -hmm. Go down against them tomorrow. Watch this. He's giving them some instructions. Read. Behold. Behold. They will come up by the ascent of Zed. He gave them insight to the enemy. This, this is what y'all need to do. Go down here, and they're going to come up on this side. Read. And you will find them at the end of the river valley in front of the wilderness of Jeruel. They had to listen intensely to get this instruction. God will show you how to maneuver around the enemy. Watch this. God will show you how to maneuver through this pandemic. Everybody's scared. Everybody's tormented. Everybody's struggling. You ain't got to struggle. I hope that you was blessed by that word on today. I really want to really drive the point home of where you spend eternity after you die. I know on Facebook people go and say, you know, they, I know people want to be inspired and they say rest in peace and, and they got their wings today, but it's more to it than that. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you don't go to heaven. You don't just go to heaven just because. No, you have to be born again. You have to commit your life to Christ. You have to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if you're watching me on today and you are not saved, you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for all of your sins, all of my sins, all of my wrong ways. Lord, you said, if I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And if you accept the Christ, you really meant that from your heart, you are now born again. Now you need to find a church home. You need to find a pastor to watch for your soul. So this is Apostle Anthony L. Trice. Thank you for watching me on today. God bless you. See you next time. We invite you to become a No More Crumbs global partner. Together we can impact the world accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister and so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As this ministry grows, may your life also produce fruit that will last. As a No More Crumbs global partner, we will lead around the globe creating change because your days of having crumbs are over. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus, located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.